guys what's up this is paul the auto technician from paul nash autos garage and today we want to take a little dive into the cooling system uh, get to know some little bit facts about it and how it operates how we can maintain it protect it from uh, unprecedented failure to keep it at top-notch condition and good performance so here with me i have this radiator that is uh, defective uh, i removed it from a vehicle the other day now this radiator it had a, a section here along this uh, cooling line channels that was uh, busted up and it was leaking uh, spraying some uh, jet <coughs> now apart from that one the vehicle had experienced some um, temperature management issues uh, it had failed the cylinder head gasket was uh, leaking and we had to swap it and we checked the head we checked the cylinder head for the any warpage or any cracked situation and it passed the test so i want to show you the reason why this radiator apart from this uh, leakage right here why it is defective <coughs> when you look at this radiator uh, we have the cooling the cooling line channels so coolant passes through these lines right here these channels that run vertically these are the cooling fins this one here allows the the coolant to be cooled comes with high temperatures from the engine it, and it is steaming hot it passes through these channels right here and air is uh, sucked through these cooling fins right here by the cooling fan I'll show you a little demonstration uh, about that air passes right through these cooling fins and then in the process heat is exchanged the air that passes through these cooling fins absorbs that heat and it radiates it outwards so this one here it can't allow air to pass through because they are already defective mm. they are bent or they are overlapping on top of each other right here you can see that and when i look uh, on the front side this is the front side you can also see it has those same issues you can see it has the, those air gaps inside right there those air gaps are within the cooling fins the gaps that you've seen facilitate an easy movement of air from the front side of the radiator to the back side of the radiator so air gets pulled through to us that direction by the cooling fans i'll show you how that happens in a moment all right guys so we have my vehicle right here i'm going to use it for that uh, little demonstration you can see my radiator and it is in uh, proper working condition so if you compare these two fins, these cooling fins right here, mine are in good working condition and the other one I show you is uh, defective. So what happens with this cooling system is that you have this upper hose right here and this one here is an outlet from the engine. This is the thermostat housing. This is normally where the uh, thermostat is situated in uh, most vehicles. But we have some applications whereby they utilize the the lower radiator house uh, housing that is connected to the engine. Uh, some of the applications that's where the the thermostat is located. So this is an old school engine. Uh, we have a water pump that pumps that coolant for it to, to circulate efficiently inside the engine. And inside the engine we have uh, cooling line chambers and we have oil chambers. And they are separated by walls of the castings, the block castings, or you can even be aluminium castings. Okay, these lines right here, they supply, this one here, it's applied to the heater core inside the vehicle for the AC. If you want hot or warm AC to circulate inside your vehicle, maybe you live in uh, extremely cold areas. Uh, this one here they help in that because they supply the warm coolant or hot coolant inside the heater core depending on how you adjust it now when this cooling fan rotates right here <laughs> you can see my <laughs> the, the shroud that i made the other day so this shroud is also important it's an integral part of the cooling system and it helps the the cooling part to collect the massive amounts of air through this the one channel right here only one outlet here and the reason being the system wants to cool cool the, uh, the coolant as much as it can and maintain the operating temperature level 
So these ones here, these are parts of the, the cooling system that enables the underhood temperatures to be maintained uh, in proper parameters uh, that will also give you good fuel economy. So when this, this uh, cooling fan is rotating, it rotates in the clockwise uh, direction. As you can see these blades here, they are angled in a fashion that it can be able to cut the wind for the air blowing through the cooling fins. The air comes through the cooling fins headed towards this direction and these cooling blades, they kind of cut it. And in the process of cutting that air, it pulls it more, it pulls more and more air to pass through the radiator. So I'm going to show you a little demonstration. I have this little piece of paper right here. Now I'm going to let it, and you can see it's falling down. I stick it and it falls down like that. So I'm going to start my engine right here and show you a little demonstration. is isolated uh, they should isolate it from the other stuff keep it in a safe isolated corner where there might there's no interference with anything make sure that they don't put or place anything on top of the radiator whether it's the hardware stuff like the spanners the wrenches or soft stuff like cotton wool or toilet roll number three when you go to a car wash talk to the car wash guys and tell them not to directly spray your radiator with the spray jet they used to spray the vehicles that way you'll be sure that your radiator is protected it will give you better performance better management of the underhood temperatures and better fuel economy thank you very much for watching this video uh, give it a thumbs up if you are new on this channel hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell so when a new video comes out you'll be among the first guys to be notified and i'll see you next time